ninety five percent of my clients would, you know, like to make me happy. So, so they want to give you oral sex. Absolutely. And did you fake having an orgasm, or did you have orgasms? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, many. <laughs> many fake or many real? Many real. Many real. Hi, it's Karen Lee Potter. Welcome to my show. Very exciting guest today. I have Gwyneth Montenegro and we're Skyping all the way across the world. I'm in Chicago and Gwyneth, you're in Australia, Melbourne, and, and you have the cutest accent. Oh, I probably, thank you. I probably have an <laughs> accent to you. You have a cute accent for me. I found the title of your book to be fascinating and I cannot wait to hear about it. Why don't we start with the juicy stuff? It's always a good place to start. My book is called 10,000 Men and County and it's about my former life as an escort. I've been an escort for 12 years, which is a very long stretch. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. you are such a young girl. I can't even imagine what age you started at. I'm 36 years old. I, I started in the industry at 21. Oh, I, I first started as a tabletop dancer and then sort of one thing led to the other and I inadvertently ended up in the sex industry. In my book, I'm very, um, what should we say, graphic. I'm very graphic. It's, it's fairly explicit, but it also talks about my life by behind the scenes as well. I'm pretty raw and honest about my life in the industry. Now, over the last 12 years that you were involved in it, what were the men like? Were they fairly normal? I understand it It was a very lucrative business. Yeah, definitely very lucrative. I've been in all arenas of the industry. I've worked in-house. In Australia, of course, prostitution is legal. So we actually have parlors here in Australia and escort agencies. Now, I started out in a parlor where the men would come in, you know, pick a girl, spend some time. And then I ended up uh, in my mid twenties, more at the elite end of my trade. So I'd be going out doing anywhere from 500 to a thousand an wow. hour. Wow. Yeah. In the, it, it, that was in the prime of my life, you know, not saying I'm not in the prime now, but you you're, know, you're definitely very... in the prime of your life now. You look pretty <laughs> damn good to me. Thank you. To answer your question more succinctly. Yeah. The guys were mainly businessmen. They, they treated me very well. Like, like I, I believe what you give out, you get back in return. You've got all your tricks and your fantasies and all that sort of thing. But a lot of guys like to chat. They like to have a conversation. They like to go on dinner date. I've even been on holiday dates. I interviewed but, yeah. uh, a sugar baby. You know, she said basically the same thing. The guys treated her really nicely. By the end of the conversation, I was like, why doesn't everybody do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there were some negative experiences as well as positive. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, you sort of give up your private life I guess I mean it's pretty hard I know women who have had relationships and done this job at the same time I couldn't do that to be totally honest it's just a whole different headspace it's just too hard and right. you, you just kind of think what guy would accept that you're sleeping me? With you. yeah. yeah even though you're emotionally and mentally detached from your clients I mean really honestly I don't know I just think it's a bit too much I, I guess we should start at the beginning. You started at age 21 and you said you just kind of like start with the table dancing, but how did you even get into the table dancing? I mean, were you a good school girl and, and planning on going to college and all the rest of the stuff that... Yeah, I'm actually the most unlikely person. And when I told my friends, they um, were very shocked, actually. They never seen it coming. I'm just a normal girl, as you've probably, yeah. <laughs> probably gathered. The girl next um, door. I actually had a really bad experience. I don't want to get too deep into it because, you know, I got over it, but I ended up in a uh, gang raped at a nightclub. Can't even imagine how horrible of experience yeah. that was. Absolutely. You post-traumatic stress syndrome. And Absolutely. I would have thought you'd go the other way, like being afraid of sex. That's interesting you say that because I, I actually, well, I did some counseling later on and they said that a woman can go one of two ways. They can either go really promiscuous or really the other way. <laughs> Obviously, we know which way you went. Now, did you feel like you had the control or did you think the men had the control? I feel I had the control. I mean, of course, I had the right to say no to anyone that was not right for me energetically, like just creeping me out. Oh, did, no. you, did you ever say no? Yeah, absolutely. I just would sort of slink to the other side of the room and not talk to the person. But on escort jobs, that was much harder because, of course, they set up the appointments yeah. for yeah. you. What are you going to do? Open the door and go, ah, no, that's not <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you, there's been times that I really wanted to do that. I just can't imagine if you get in a room with a guy and he has like the worst breath or he just really reeks. I mean, do you tell him to take a shower? What do you do? Like, um, hi, tiger. You know, it'd be like, nice to, you know, let's have a shower together. And okay. you'd sort of be very subtle about it. A I mean, bar of soap and a scrub brush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gwyneth, for coming on my show. I loved having you. You are so bright. You're so open about what you did. And for all of you who would like to read Gwyneth's book, the links will be in my description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Karen Lee Potter. I put out videos every Wednesday and Friday. I love you all. Mwah. In addition, there's a new button on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to donate a few bucks, I'd appreciate it.